Hey everyone, today we're going to be looking at a game called Wolf Pack. Uh, it's just came out uh, early access on Steam. And yeah, we'll just jump right in. Play now. Um, I've set mine here on uh, uh, friends only. Okay, so we'll just be allowed, uh, anybody on my friends list will come in. This will just keep it private for us. Uh, select a new lobby. Uh, in here we can select different missions, different times for those missions. We'll just keep it with North Sea. I uh, just will make it easy just for the tutorial. Alright, our mission. We have to head to grid Alpha November 4 Niner. You'll see that right here. We'll start a, a little bit um, around that and have to make our way there. So that's our mission. We need 15,000 tons worth of enemy freighters. Now we'll jump right in. Okay, here we can basically, uh, if it was multiplayer, each player can join in a certain slot. It doesn't really matter, it's just where they start. We can also select different subs. We'll take U552 and I'll join as the captain. And we'll start the mission. Okay, when you first start, uh, we, we want to basically get underwater as soon as possible uh, to do a sonar search for any enemies. So the best way to do this solo, just click here, we're going to empty the water out of this tank. Alright, and that uses a little bit of our compressed air, but that'll give us some buoyancy for the next step. Okay, so up here we're going to flood the uh, forward ballast tanks. Open, you can hear some water coming in. If we also look at this gauge, you can see the water is filling up. And we also have an aft ballast, and we'll open that one up also. Now I know this one is normally used, uh, this negative one, for, for emergency dives. We're going to keep it full of air, and that will give us the buoyancy we need to control the sub properly solo. We'll let these fill up. This is basically our dive uh, station. This is where we'll do the majority of controlling uh, the depth of the sub. To the left, this is mainly our uh, engines up here and our rudder control. And as solo, this is uh, a little bit difficult. It is a multiplayer game. All right, the uh, forward one is done. Side up. ballast tanks uh, full of air, you're, you're buoyant, so you'll come to the top. Now if we fill those ballast tanks with water, our buoyancy is neutral. I'm just going to get rid of some of these bottom messages that are coming up. Mission status, F for our flashlight, T, starts a timer, T to stop it again, R to reset. Okay, so let's uh, first of all switch to electric batteries. Now, if you hold the shift, it'll do both at the same time. So we'll just switch to electric. You always want to uh, switch to electric engines before the dive. This is our uh, speed and knots. All right, click here and we'll start our dive. You have a forward. Uh, a control and, a, and an aft control. So A and D controls your forward diving plane. So we're going to put this all the way down. And if you look up here, you'll see our depth. And this one's controlled by the arrow keys. So we'll put this one all the way down. And you'll see our depth start to go down. Now when you're playing you have two different periscopes. You uh, 
one is about 11 and a half uh, meters. The other one is, I think, about 14 meters. Your attack periscope is about 14 meters of depth. Okay, we're just going to straighten out some planes. Set that to neutral. We'll go down to about uh, 13 meters. Bring this plane back up. Now you got to kind of play with it a little bit to see what your neutral point is. So here, well, we're about five degrees down plane. I think it's dropping really slowly, but that's fine. So, and if we wanted to level out, we could play with it a little bit. Keep it here. So, all of our controlling of the sub will be done from done from this station right here now because of using this as our our ballast. So we'll go into here. This is your hydrophone. This is what we're going to use to listen for uh, enemy freighters or warships. Okay, so what I like to do is turn this up a little bit. Okay, half. Make sure the volume's up. We can play with these later, but just leave them default. Now, I can already hear a pulsing. So what we do from here, this will help us lock in a little bit, is we'll listen to when the noise starts and stops. I definitely say we can hear it at 195. Still hear it a bit here. So 145, 195, we'll cut that in half. And we'll just say that 175 is where we're hearing that from. It is fairly close. Right, so we'll come to our rudder control. We'll bring this around hitting 195. I'm also going to speed back up. Now we are on electric engines. We have lots of uh, capacity left. Just keep an eye on that when you're running electrics. We're going to shoot for 195. And I'm just using the A and D to control the rudder. That's close enough. 
We're gonna slow back down to listen. Now that should be more in front of us now. Starting about 150. Starting about 200. So again, we'll cut that in half. Shoot for about 175. The game definitely requires a lot of patience. at the top of this is, is zero is pointing straight ahead regardless of what your actual heading is magnetically. So you'd be taking bearings when you're using the scopes. periscope stowing them properly and also closing this hatch we haven't been outside yet but we'll do that next always make sure uh, things are stowed and the hatch is closed okay so we're actually going to surface and put on the diesel engines and see if we can catch up with whatever is uh, coming up on that sonar back on and you can see on our amp meter we've gone down a little bit you can also see on the uh, ETO charge batteries so our diesels are now running and uh, we'll, have, we'll put it at great speed and over here we'll see our knots increase considerably travel much faster on the surface and obviously it's much more dangerous to travel on the surface but we need to catch the uh, freighters. Hold shift, let's go to full. Okay, 
so we're on the surface. I always like to make sure the plane is up just so uh, we don't go under. Okay, if I head up the ladder all the way up to the hatch. Alright. So we're getting uh, signals somewhere in front of us. Can use this. And what we basically want to do is be able to spot them before they spot us. And normally what I would do is uh, push M for a map are hitting. I want uh, angles and I want time info. We're going to draw a line. One click. Okay, we'll draw a timestamp right here. And depending on how close the uh, signals were coming from, I'll do the about 10 minutes and then I'll dive down with my sonar and listen again. But yeah, we'll just keep uh, moving forward and keep an eye out for any ships we can see. Uh, sometimes at this point I'll even use the attack periscope to get more uh, height off the water. Always close the hatch. I'll show you what I mean. So I'll push W get a lot more height pretty foggy out there. And I normally do 60 to 90 degree arcs when I'm looking. Yeah, I don't see anything obvious. We'll zoom in. And your periscope moves much slower when you're zoomed in. Our ballast tanks are still full, and that'll slow us down considerably. So if the signals were very faint, and we knew we'd be uh, needing to travel for quite a while. You would want to empty these tanks, and I'll just show you how to do that now. And you can see we're doing 13 knots here. You can see that water is now being blown out with the compressed air. We also have to remember to uh, fill the compressor up. We'll drain it all in. So, shut the valve off. You can see we've got like 570 compressor is back here, so we'll head back this way. This thing's loud. We'll left click. There's the compressor. And if you look, you'll see the pressure's rising. And while we're here, we'll also shift charge batteries. So we're just under eight and a half. You can already see it going up. That's how you would charge the batteries. Shift the one to full speed. Check our pressure. On 900. I'll shut it off just for the, the sake of the noise. Check the map. Take another timestamp. This will tell us how far we're a little bit off. But it's going about five minutes it looks like. And I'll usually go 10-15 uh, you know, minutes depending on how far away it is. This was actually pretty close. So I'll go for another five minutes and then I'll do some sonar. 
I'll dive down and do more sonar. Make sure I'm on the right path still. Quick peek in here. And not see anything. Alright, so I'll just continue doing that and I'll come back when we're about to uh, do the dive to listen to the sonar again.